Chica. Welcome back. We are on episode 33 now of the HCG Diet Interviews. I have Melissa with me today. Um, she is someone that you want to hear what she has to say because she's been maintaining for seven months now. Uh, she's lost 85 pounds HCG infections um, in two rounds. Went from a size 24 to a size 8. And so the, the main thing here, though, is the fact that she's been maintaining for several months. So that helps us to see that this works and that she's going to have some good some good pointers for us. So thanks so much for being with me today, Melissa. Thank you. Hi, Rizal. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we just get into it and you tell me just some of your basic steps, like your age and a little bit of your background. I am 43 years old. Um, I am five foot four, not very tall. <laughs> um, I have always been a thick girl, so um, didn't really start my real, real struggle until after I had my children. Um, I ended up at one point actually having my stomach stapled uh, because of my weight issue, um, and I did really well with that for about three years, um, and I ended up having to have a hysterectomy, and within a month of that, my weight problems started again. Wow. And I, I didn't realize at that time it was a hormonal thing, um, but that's that's when my real struggle with my weight started. Gotcha, gotcha. And did you mention something about diabetes at all prior to HCG? I did. I wasn't even aware that I was diabetic. Um, and my doctor, as part of his protocol, they did blood work at the beginning of the uh, of, of the diet. And um, two weeks later, after I had already started the diet, is when I got my results. And I found um, I was diabetic and didn't even know it. Wow. Yeah. And at that time, the doctor told me that he felt we would just go ahead and continue the diet. And um, no medication at that point that he felt we could get it under control with the diet yeah. and we did uh, after my after my last injection um, we went ahead and did the blood work again and diabetes was gone that is so awesome and you kind of have no idea huh like how long you had had diabetes no I had no clue at all no so if I had done the diet I would have honestly there would have been I didn't feel like I had any symptoms or anything. You know, I don't really know what the symptoms were for, for diabetes. So yeah. there would have been no reason for me to go get blood work or to even know that I was diabetic. So I, I have no idea how long I, I had been dealing with that. Interesting. But. And that's what's interesting is that, like, even though you didn't have symptoms at that point, no doubt, like, the high blood sugar and stuff was probably doing damage in your body that you weren't exactly. aware of. That's exactly right. So it was it was a, a blessing in more ways than one that I that I started the diet. So that's so great. So how did you feel about you know being overweight? Like we said, as a younger person, you felt like you were thick. Like I'm curious to hear like your feelings or your story with that. Like what made you feel the way you did? Um, honestly, growing up, um, I developed very young. I was nine years old when I started my whole menstrual cycle and everything. So everything else developed as well. And you can imagine being nine years old and having breasts at that age when nobody else did. Um, it made me different. And there were people at that time who teased me a lot. And I guess, I guess that's where it all really started. Now that I look back, it, it, you know, I can see, oh, they were all the same size as me. The only difference was I had, I had developed before they had. So I think that's where the mental, you know, the complex actually started that um, I always felt like I had issues. And like I said, to, to look back now, I wish I could be that size again, you know. And I, and I look at, at photos and, and I realize there was nothing, there was nothing different about me than, you know, from the other people other than, I had developed a lot earlier than, than they had. So, but I think, I think that stays with you, you know, the teasing and, and all of that. And, um, and you do, you get to a certain point where you realize, you know, um, you've got to move past that. But, um, it, that, I think that's where my biggest issue started mentally. I think that's where, that's where it started. So. Got you. And I think it's, it's interesting too, how, um, the way others perceive you can affect how you perceive yourself. 
you know, and, and like you said, sticks with you, you know, even into yes. adulthood, you know, and then you, like you said, then when you look back, you're like, wait a minute, I wasn't fat. <laughs> Yeah, true. And I know this is probably, this is probably awful of me to say, but I look back now, well, actually, I know some of the people who teased me back then, I look back now, and unfortunately, it's come back to haunt them, you know, and, and, um, it kind of feels good. <laughs> I don't know if it's bad. You know, after, I shouldn't say that like that. I, I should say I, I feel good that I am where I am now, yeah. and, um, and I'm proud of, of where I, you know where I am now. I'm not I'm not perfect by any means, but I'm happy. Yeah, so. well, it sounds like I mean it's you you've taken responsibility for your body and for being healthy, you know. Definitely, definitely, yes. It, it gets to that point where you know you've got to do something. You know, I had um I had become about three years ago I had become a stay at home grandma. And um, my daughter was going to go to college, had just had her first baby, and, and my husband um, works in a, in a profession that pays very well, and uh, luckily. And at that time, he said, you know, you don't have to work, just stay here and stay home. And, and um, I decided, okay, you know, for the first time in my life, I had never, I had always been, you know, pretty much a single mom and, and having to do that. So I thought, okay, and um, decided to take care of my, my grandbaby at that time, and um, so my daughter could go to school. And during that time, um, even though I was I was constantly moving, I was always with him and staying busy. I wasn't a couch potato by any means, and and I wasn't an overeater. Um, you know, I was probably having maybe toast for breakfast and then going the entire day without eating, and then having dinner. You know, in the evening. Um, but I was continuing. I was just gaining this weight and gaining this weight, and I had no idea why. And um, and I finally, when I got to that 250 pounds that I, you know, where I finally ended up at, I thought, this is just too much. I have to do something. And I had tried in between the exercise um, and, um, you know, I did the yo-yo dieting and, and, and all of that and the pills and different. And I had found a couple of things that worked for me, but I finally got to a point where nothing, you know, changing my eating habits, exercising literally every day, going to the gym. Um, it wasn't making a difference the way it had prior. And I didn't know then that it was my hormones, but um, I just happened to come across the HCG. I had a, a good a friend from school who posted one day on Facebook that he was very proud of his fiance who had lost 25 pounds in one month. And I thought, oh, I have to know how she did this. <laughs> so I messaged, yes, I messaged him and um, that's where it all started. That's where it all started, and she has done amazing, and she's maintained and, and is the coach herself and has gone on to do other things, too, um, but that's where it all started for me, so. That's neat. Well, how about you give us a few just details? I kind of gave them a little bit of an intro, but tell us your actual starting and ending weight and, like, how many rounds you did and that type of stuff, the timing of it. Sure. Um, I started at 250 pounds. Um, my first round... I I actually did a, a pretty long extension. I did nine weeks my first round, and um, I lost 60 pounds in that in those nine weeks. Um, I had a goal that I was trying to reach before December, before Christmas, and so I begged the doctor. It, I was still. I know. I know some people tend to um, the HCG. If you get to a certain point, can start losing its effectiveness but I was still losing so well when I got to my six weeks that I asked the doctor you know can we please just go ahead and continue um I feel good I'm still losing very well and so he agreed and I so I did I I had gone from September the 28th was my first injection date and then at the end of my my first round was December the 12th and within that time I lost the 60 pounds and then I I took three weeks off I did a three-week break, um, and then I started my second round. And my second round went uh, five weeks. I want to say it was five to six weeks. Sure. And in that time, I, ha I did start to slow down in the, in the last in the last portion. Um, I figured I was getting closer to my goal weight, and, and, and I expected it to slow down. Um, so that second round, I lost 19, 19 pounds in my second round. Sure. And my last, sure. last injection date was February the 8th. Cool. And then um, after that, at that point, I was at 171. My my ending weight was 171. 
and I continued to lose after that during phase three and even into when I, I'm sorry, phase four and, um, and even now, so. That's awesome. Yeah, when I was reading over what you wrote, I kind of I made a few notes for people just to put it in perspective with, with your results. So basically, you ended up doing phase two, like the losing weight portion for a total of 14 weeks, nine weeks yes. and five weeks. You know, like she said, it was separated out by actually only three weeks, so after a pretty short break. But so yes. 14 weeks, is it's really, that's just over three months, I believe, three and a half months. So essentially, you guys, Melissa lost close to, well, you lost 79 pounds, then you lost a few pounds in P3, but she lost almost 80 pounds in three and a half months basically. So that's all the time that you had to spend on a diet was right. that three and a half month period of your life. And that's what I really appreciate about HCG is how efficient it is for your time. You know, because it's like, well, you know, you and I, we've been trying to get together to do this interview for like a couple yeah. months, right? And sometimes things crazy life comes up, yeah. right? And then we have to reschedule. So it just, our lives are crazy these days, and so it's harder to, like, spend two years every day on a diet, whereas with it HCG, when you can consolidate, you know, and, like, lose the chunk, then you can eat at a maintenance level of calories, which is so much easier, right? We're going to talk about that. All of your low-carb stuff that you need to do, it's, it's as restrictive, and you can maintain, you know? Um, so I just wanted to share that with all of you guys, just to put it in perspective about how much it can accomplish. Um, so that's, and you've been maintaining for how many months now? Um, almost seven. Seven. I'm going on seven. That's yes. awesome. That is fantastic. Well, um, and then do you remember what dosage of HCG that you took when you did injections? Um, <laughs> was it, is it the normal, is it 125? Is that what it? It can be. Yeah, I mean, you were at a clinic, so I don't know. Maybe you don't, maybe you're not sure. I'm almost positive it was the one, 125. Cool. And how did you feel on that, like hunger-wise? I never, again, uh, to go back to my, you know, what all the reason for my, my weight gain was, I was never an overeater. So um, I, I never had hunger issues when I started. Gotcha. I had cravings I had the cravings and it was more my I always say it was my mouth wanting it not my stomach you know it wasn't that I was hungry um I actually was one of the people who um I had a lot of trouble getting to my 500 calories every day I tried very hard in the beginning because being new to it I thought oh I've got to hit that 100 calories I mean 500 calories I'm sorry um but I don't think people and this is what I would tell everyone when I started they're like oh my goodness 500 calories how are you going to do that it was more food than I was eating before you know and I would tell people you don't realize when you're eating right and when you're eating healthy like that it's so easy to get so much more food in with so little calories so I did um I never had a hunger problem I had a being sick from being full problem yeah. so i i eventually got to the point where i just i ate to hunger once i was full i stopped so my average honestly on on a daily basis was 250 to 350 calories per day and and that was making sure i got my protein in and, and i never felt bad i never felt weak um and i was never hungry so i i felt healthy at that time and then I think that was one of the biggest questions family and friends would have is, you know, how do you do that? How can you survive on those three calories? That's, you'd be surprised how, when you're eating right, how much food you're actually taking in. So it was, um, it was good. It was, it was, it was, I should say, easier than, than I thought it would be, you know, um, and I felt good. So that was a big, that was the big thing. I never felt deprived. I never felt like I was starving. I felt, I felt good. That's great. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And I wanted to mention for, you know, for the audience, for you guys, if you're watching, um, I actually have a whole video and blog post on, um, I'm going to write it down here so I make sure to put the link, but can you eat less than 500 calories on HCG? Because that is a question I get a lot, and you can, but I have like a whole conversation about when it's okay, when it's when 
isn't and because there are times when it wouldn't be appropriate and so I think that might be helpful so I'll link you guys to that in the show notes um I had a question for you so you said that you were never an overeater before and that you actually you felt like you were eating like really low calorie like that just in regular life before I I didn't I didn't think I was eating low calorie. I, it was a small amount of food. Gotcha. Um, small amount. You know, it, right. I, so I you wouldn't say it, calories it was. But. No, I don't. Um, it was probably, I mean, it's easy to sit down and, and, and say, oh, I only eat one time a day, but um, I ate a Big Mac and French fries. And, you know, I mean, and once you've done the 500 calories, you realize, oh, my goodness, one, one meal like that is, you know, a, more than a whole day's worth of people on HCG, what, what we eat in a whole day. So, um, yes, I, I will say I, I didn't eat a lot, but it probably was not as healthy as it, it should have been, definitely. That's so. interesting. Thanks for that. Yeah. So, um, I'm, so I'm curious, why don't we move on to what you were doing during phase two? What did you find yourself eating during phase two? Um, how did you prepare meals, stuff like that? I actually stayed very simple and boring with my phase two. Um, I just wanted, I, you know, I knew there were recipes and stuff out there, but I was so afraid to do something wrong or get off the protocol in some way or, you know, miss some calories. I, I was I, mentally, I was, I'm sticking to this. And I'm, this is, you know, I, this is what I have to do. So I, I was very simple. Most days it was either, you know, ground beef patties, um, chicken tenderloins, uh, grilled shrimp, something like that. My, unfortunately, I, I can honestly say I'm not a big veggie person. So my veggies were like, you know, cucumber, um, green beans, broccoli, and spinach. Those are probably the only vegetables I had the entire time I was on there. Yeah. And, um, that was it. I, I did find, I did try tomatoes in the beginning, but I found that tomatoes were actually one of the things that seemed to slow me down. Um, so I, that was, that was probably the only food that I really found that, um, that did affect me to where I would, I would actually start to slow down on my weight loss. So I noticed that in the beginning I stopped. Um, but I was very, very simple, very basic. And, you know, um, I did, I'm a big, need like ketchup and stuff with my with my food so the only thing I did do I, I did mustard a long time with my I have to have some type of sauce with my meat I mean that was just yeah. I had to so I am um, I did mustard with my chicken and my beef for a while and then I found a sugar-free recipe it's ketchup recipe that worked for me so I did that a lot I was making homemade my homemade ketchup and um, I found ways, I definitely found ways around, you know, ways that fit in the protocol um, a, around some of the little things that I, that I was missing. And, uh, and it worked. I, uh, Walden Farms is actually one of, was one of my big things. Um, I did try those, the caramel sauce. I would eat that with my apples and, you know, um, slice my apples as thin as I could possibly get them so that I I had I felt like I had more I to eat. Too. Yeah, and, it, and mentally it works because you feel like you're eating it longer. It and um, and the, the caramel sauce always made me feel like I was being bad when I wasn't. Yeah. So it was a it was my little treat. But um, I was I was actually very simple and, and boring for my, the entire P two and P three. <laughs> So. That, those are good things. So, how about how much of the caramel sauce would you have, like, in a serving? Just, you know, um, I would say I, I would put on a plate, I would limit myself to maybe about a tablespoon, a tablespoon or so, and I would just barely dip my apples, so, again, to make it go as far as I could. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was How often it was you do much. something like that? Um, well, I apples were my, were my go-to thing. But the, the caramel sauce, um, because it was hard to find, unfortunately, here without ordering it, um, I am. Um, it would probably be a couple times a week that I that I would do that because I knew I'd run out too fast if I did it anymore. Sure, gotcha. <laughs> so that's good. And I also wanted to mention for everyone watching um, or listening, if you're on the podcast or whichever one, but um, you mentioned that you had green beans and broccoli. Um, which aren't on the original protocol, but obviously 
She's lost 85 pounds, folks, and she's been maintaining for seven months. So was this a problem? Obviously not. So um, so that's interesting, too. I just want to mention that, you know, that people do incorporate different things at times. You were eating very low calorie because you weren't hungry. Um, you've had a few different vegetables, which I also did as well in my final round. And so just a little point of interest there. So, yeah, that was interesting. You also mentioned that you had sugar-free gum as like a – thing to carry you through at times? I did. If I ever started to have a, um, just a little bit of a sweet tooth, um, which wasn't really a problem before, honestly, I wasn't a big sweets kind of person. But there were times that I found maybe somebody, maybe family was having cake or something sweet in front of me and, and I didn't, you know, to not think about it, I would, I would chew sugar-free gum. And instead of buying like mint or something, I would buy a berry flavor. So it was sweet. Yeah. And I would just drink water, and it was always, it just, it really helped. It really, really helped just for, for me to forget if I was having any kind of little craving. Good, good. That's that's a good tip. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, let's see here. You mentioned something about um, prepping, prepping food and stuff. Like, how, how much was that a part of your success? Huge, huge part. Um I, I found it was so much easier, and I would make, on like, on a Sunday, I would cook, you know, all my chicken, i cook all my beef, and... Um, like for, for a few days? Yes. Or? No, no, I, I would actually do a whole week, and, and I would do, well, I, I shouldn't say, I, I would probably, the, the work week, you know, is, is what it would cover for me, um, and it was so much easier knowing you had that food, you know, that I had the food there in the fridge ready to go at any time. And, and it made it much easier to not have to think, okay, what am I going to do? I don't have my food ready or the family's sitting down to dinner. Am I going to, you know, have to eat what they're eating or it, it just mentally, you knew your food was there, you go get it. And that's how I do the entire time I was on HCG, I was cooking for a whole family normal, you know, just the way they would eat all the time. And, and, and we're a Hispanic family, so it was, you know, <laughs> Mexican food and all the good stuff. And yeah, and I, and I honestly, I was at that point, again, the mental thing with me trying to stick to the diet, I honestly felt like I was being bad when I would even have to just kind of sample the, the sauce of whatever I was making in my head. It was, it was me being bad, so I'd have to get my daughter. To, I know, it was terrible, but it was, it was, for me, it kept me honest, you know, and I know, it, I guess you don't have to be that extreme, but I was, and it wasn't, I figured, okay, if I, if I let myself eat this, am I going to want more afterwards, you know, even if I just taste test it. So for me, it was easier just stay away from it, don't even bother, and, and you do when you know, when I would have all my food prepped, and everybody would sit down for dinner. I would just warm up my food and sit down and eat with everybody. And it was, you know, I didn't feel left out or deprived or, or anything. So um, prepping, I think, it makes it much easier. And it makes it so easy not to cheat or not to have to think about what you're going to do. And I think it is a big, big part um, to the success of, of being able to do um, a diet like this or a protocol like this, definitely, most definitely. That's what I, I, I preach that when I talk to people about, you know, even eating the way I eat now, um, I still feel that, that food prep is a, is a huge part to it being successful. I'm really glad you mentioned that too, because um, I was thinking about that just recently, actually. I don't actually prep food in advance in daily life most of the time, but I was thinking that that's so true on HCG, especially because you're so limited. And there's, there's a, my life is fairly structured. I'm able to access food pretty easily because I'm home quite a bit. But um, there's times where I'm out and about. I just finished CrossFit, and then I realize I need to do some errands, and I won't be able to go home for a couple hours. And I'm thinking in my head, like, I really need to eat something after such a hardcore workout. I really need some protein, and I don't have anything. And like you said, it's a ment it, it kind of puts you on a mental trip where you're like, yes worried and anxiety now, like kind of concerned about what might happen or, or like you said, what do I choose now? And now I, my choices aren't that great. And then you have to pick the best one, which is not ideal at a store, like some bar. And I'm like, well, I don't usually eat these bars. So how do I feel about this? And what, what's going to happen? And, you know, it's like, it just messes me up, you know, and it's just kind of some mental stress that is nice that you don't have to deal with. And, you know, in daily life, I can handle that now and then you know, for, on occasion, but when you're on HCG and every day you have 
there's only these foods you can eat and it's really does matter. Like you said, that's where that prep gives you that peace of mind. You have what you need. If something comes up, you don't have to worry. So that's, that's great. Great tips there. Yeah. And I also like to, you know, you mentioned, and I found that for people, it really varies how people feel when it comes to, um, how tempted they feel when they're around food, like with their family or cooking dinner for their family. Um, some people really struggle. Others, they feel like, nope, I'm ready. Like, this is it. It doesn't matter. And, and I've even, even within the same person from round to round, I've seen it to vary, right? So yes. I don't know if you have an answer to this question, but do you feel like, do you feel like what helped you to feel so kind of set where you weren't tempted to or struggling with it every night? Like, oh, I wish I could have that food every night, you know? Like, what helped you, do you think? I was determined. I, I, I had gotten to a point in my life where I just didn't like myself anymore. Um, I had shut down, shut off, shut myself off from family, friends, you know, even – Oh, just the thought of somebody having a graduation or something where I was going to have to get dressed up to go somewhere. It was terror. I mean, it truly was. It was, it was, it was depressing. It was and mentally, you know, terrorizing to me because I knew I was going to have to go out and buy clothes and, and see what I really look like again. Um, but it was determination. And I think once for me, once that weight started to come off, and you know, within the first week, it's just amazing. That's the thing about HCG is, is you start seeing the changes so quickly that it makes it so easy to just keep going and just keep going and know that you. Ha um, <laughs> I'm gonna start. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I knew I was gonna do this, and I was trying really hard not to. Um, okay. You, you have, you have that that goal, and when you start to see it and you see those changes it just makes it so worth it and, and in your mind you know that um there were days there were days let me try and get off that you know, a little bit there were days that I did have the stalls I did have you know I did stall um I want to say my first stall was in my fourth week I, I believe it was um and you start and, and knowing even though knowing I had been I hadn't cheated at all I was doing everything right um so many Mentally, you start to have that fear. Oh, my goodness. Um, and my stall, my first stall, I want to say I had gone three, almost four days. And you do start to mentally go, okay, I'm eating this like this every single day. Um, my weight is the same every morning when I wake up. You start to question it. And, you you know, mentally it becomes, do I keep going? Do I keep going? I said, yes, you know, and just keep going. <laughs> and and I would. And I found, I found that... Um, my stalls particularly there were days where i was running around and i didn't eat and or i didn't drink all my water that day and um you know i had realized okay these last two three days they've all been the same where i didn't eat all my protein i didn't drink all my water and on almost as, as immediately after i started that i would start losing again it would it would jump start me but um i think the determination and, and once i started seeing that weight come off it was very easy to not want to go backwards and to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And, um, and that was it. That was it for me. I, you know, I have, I have had friends and family who tried it after me when they saw the, the success and I had some that did well and I had some that didn't at all within the first week they were cheating. And I think it is when you, for people who are still researching and, and looking at this, you know, go into it knowing that it works, first of all. But um, mentally, I mean, prepared and, and, and be ready to say no to that, you know, whatever, that piece of cake or, you know, any of that. Just knowing that, that you're going to have to do that. But just be mentally strong and, and believe in yourself. Just believe that, that it works and it can work and it, and it can be a, um, a way of life afterwards. You know, it's just, that's why I tell people now I'm not... You know, when I say, and I'm sure we'll talk about this in a minute, but I'm on a low-carb diet. I don't like to say the word diet because I don't feel like I'm on a diet. It's my way of life now. It's the way I eat. And um, um, I think the HCG just really prepared me for that. You know, you get used to the no refined sugar and the low-carb. And um, I think it was a really awesome 
segue, you know, into what I, the way I live now. So. Thank you. Yeah, those are really good thoughts. And I wanted to, to mention, a, you know, just touch on a few things that you said. Um, you know, you talked about preparing food for your family and, you know, that sometimes things needed to be tasted. And, you you know, you think that, like, well, I can't even have that little bit. And like you said, maybe it would be okay. But the point is, is that you knew mentally that it wasn't a good thing for you to do because of what might happen as a result. And so I think for, you know, for all of you guys out there, same thing. Like, be true to what you know about yourself, you know, and because this is such a short period of time, right? It's like three yes. months, in the end, three months out of your whole life where you're, you're, you're kind of being a little drastic and asking your daughter to taste stuff or, you know, or whatever, you know, maybe your family's, I don't know, you know, so, but it's like, it's such a short period of time out of your life for what you're accomplishing. It's so worth it to be extra cautious, you know, if, if you know that it's going to be a problem for you. And that was my, that was my, um, part of my coaching for people who, after I was done and I, you know, I started coaching friends and family, I, it's exactly what I would tell them. It is such a short portion of your life that you have to do this. Don't sit there and feel like, oh, I'm going to eat, you know, like this forever because it's not, you know, it's not. And you have to tell yourself that when you're missing that pizza or you're missing those hamburgers, um, it, you have to remind yourself it really is such a short period of time to get healthy and happy. You know, it's, it's nothing when you, when you look at what the outcome will be and, and how much it changes your life. Truly, truly. Yeah, I like those thoughts. And yeah, and the other thing I was thinking that I liked that you talked about was just um, how unhappy you had gotten before you had started um, that you could no longer, you know, enjoy, um, you know, events that were planned, right? I, I remember feeling that same way where, in, I mean, because really it's like these different events in our life, they're, they're, there's a purpose to them, right? They're supposed to be meaningful, like to that person and to us, there's supposed to be something special about it, whatever it is. And, and it's so sad that we get to that point where now it's just this totally scary thing where like you said, Oh my goodness, I don't have anything to wear or I have to put on something that I feel horrible about myself in or, you know, and so it's like we, we start losing out on meaning in our life because, because of that, you know, yeah, absolutely. Too. I look, I look back now and, you know, I, I told you about the my before and after photos. I, I can't pull up before, you know, I can't look back and I miss so many things. Or there's so many things with me missing from them because I just couldn't stand to see myself in a photo. And and it's sad. I mean it's sad that we, we live like that or that, that you get to that point. And that's and that's where and now <laughs> you look and you know, I've got pictures of me and my grandbabies and it's like I'm okay, I'm ready. Let's do selfies, okay, sure. <laughs> you know, and it, it, it just <laughs> it it changes everything. It just changes everything and, and um it was, I mean, it, it was a blessing. It really, truly was. I, I And that's why I do. I preach. And you, know, and, and you still have these people who, oh, that's not healthy. How can you eat like that? You know, as far as the HCG goes, when, when I tell people how I did it. And you still have the naysayers and, and people. And all I have to say is, you know, I did it. I lived it. I was healthy. I felt good. I, I look at me now, you know. I mean, I was diabetic. I'm not anymore and my blood pressure I did I'm sorry and that's one thing I forgot to mention I had very high blood pressure prior I don't need medication for my blood pressure anymore gotcha. um, it stays completely completely normal so it, it, it changes so many things not just your health but your physical health but mental mental health it, it was just um, it's been wonderful <laughs> Good. thank you for that yeah and then I also appreciated what you mentioned about the stall uh, because stalls do happen, and like you said, it can mess with you mentally. Um, but I liked that you troubleshooted it. So, and, and, and I tell people that too. Like, sometimes there may not be a reason, but it is a great idea to troubleshoot because there can be things. Like you mentioned, tomatoes seem to kind of trip you up. Other people sometimes notice cabbage or beef. I mean, you might think, like, I just don't get the science behind it. It's like, well, you know, it doesn't matter. It's like, if enough people just notice that they don't lose weight when they eat a certain food, just it's not a big deal to avoid it, right? It's not like it's hurting something to not eat cabbage. So, so you know, um, so it's worth trying out those troubleshooting things. Um, 
my little phase two workbook, I have a troubleshooting section for that very reason, so that when you notice things, you can kind of write down what you did, because sometimes you can forget, like you said, you can think like, oh, I forgot that I wasn't really drinking much water for a few days because I was busy, and, and those things can make a difference, you know? And I think when it comes to water, I've had people ask me, and I, and I did have, I actually had a friend who was doing the HCG, and she came to me and said, um, I'm doing everything right, I stalled, and the first thing I asked her was, are you drinking all your water, you know, are you getting all your protein in, and for her, it turned out it was her water, she's like, you know what, I haven't, so for me, and, and it was sometimes, and I'm going to tell you, when I started, I hated water, I was not a water person at all, if I drank water, it had to have something in it, you know, it had to have the flavoring, some type of packet of something, yeah. um, but I got to the point where I just, I drank, I would fill up my pitcher for the day, you know, my 64 ounces, and it would go in the fridge, and I knew I had to finish that by the end of the day. If I drank more, great, but I knew it come the end of the night, that had to be empty, and that's how I kept track of it. That was a real easy way for me to, um, you know, track my water like that, knowing that I had to do that every day, but yeah, those 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 things, those little things, and, and the concept for me in the beginning was, okay, I have to drink more water to lose more water or lose the weight. It didn't make sense until I saw, you know what, that is so true. It actually makes a huge difference, a very big difference for me. It, it did. So. Good. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Well, why don't we move into phase three now? Um, let, let's talk a little bit about that. So give us, you know, the good and the bad. Like, what did you discover? Um, how did you end up doing it? I... Well, and I, it was actually one of the questions I came to you with before I started P3 because I was terrified, yeah. you know, again, because by the time it was time for me to go into P3, I had lost 60 pounds. And the thought of even gaining one of those back was just, it was terrifying. Yeah. And um, so that was one of the things I actually had emailed you about one of the questions. And um I took the easy route. Again, I was just boring and simple. All I did was take P2 and I doubled my calories and, you know, ate twice as much. And it was, again, P3, another reason it was it was more difficult is I was having trouble with the amount of food that I was eating on P2, getting it in. Yeah. So with P3, I, same issue, you know, just trying to get at least get half of what I should have had in um, close to it. But that it turned out to be just fine. I didn't gain any weight. I did great. I actually lost um, a pound or two here and there on the first one, and then I lost more than that on the second, on my side, the end of my second round. Um, but I think just simplifying it for me was the best thing. I wasn't going to try and oh, let me, let me try and see if I can add something in or if I can change. It was just, it wasn't worth it for me mentally. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> too risky, much too risky. So I just, that's all I, that's honestly, as boring as it sounds, that is all I did was take P2 and bump it up a little bit. <laughs> that's <laughs> no. it. So when you did that, just so I'm curious, so then did you take, did you double the P2 fruits as well in phase you know, three? How did no, that actually, no, I, I stayed with my fruits the, the same, um, just because I was still afraid of, even though it wasn't, you know, refined sugar, I still was afraid to take a chance on that natural sugar after doing, and I did, I did so much reading, and so, you know, and you, you find things out there, somebody says this, somebody says that, and you kind of just have to take it all in and, and try to draw the best conclusion you have and see how it's going to work for you, but for me, it was, again, just, I doubled my protein is what I did, because I had found that um, on the days, like I said, on the days where I would have stalls or that I would slow down, and I knew it were days, they were days that I um, had missed out on protein, and as soon as I would say, um, you know, make sure the next day that I got all my protein in, and I would find that my weight would right away, I mean, there were mornings I'd wake up and I'd, you know, go from a stall to three pounds the next morning. I would lose like that overnight, and so finding that that was working for me, that was what I did in P3. I just, um, I doubled my protein for the most gotcha. part. That was what I did. Gotcha. Okay, that clarifies that. So with, so you would have maybe a couple fruits a day or something in phase three? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Cool. That's helpful. And now how about today? You've been maintaining for seven months. Um, what is your eating lifestyle? What are, yeah, just share, share that. I am a, I'm a low carber. I am, I guess what you call true low carber. I stay 20 grams or less per day. 
Um, I've cut out, you know, I still don't, no refined sugar, nothing white, um, you know, no grains, no, all of that. But I, um, I'm real big on, on recipes now. You know, I do, I eat just normal if I'm, if I'm just hungry and I don't have time, you know, I stick with my eggs or my bacon or, um, you know, all the stuff I'm allowed, the ground beef. Um, but I do make a lot of rest, a lot of bigger recipes, like say a meat lasagna, you know, pasta list, of course. Yeah. Um, but everything I allowed in as far as being, you know, lo doing the low carbing. Um, so I'm real big on that. I've got the low carb cookbooks, and for me, it's it's not even. It is about the weight, of course. I don't want to go back to that, but I have to remember that I was diabetic, and my dad is diabetic. You know, so it's in it's in my family. So I, for the rest of my life, I still have to remember that I I have to worry about that. So it's it's a twofold kind of thing for me. You know, just stay healthy weight wise, but to make sure that I don't have to go back and, and be on medication for diabetes. Um, so that's how I live, and, and it's and it's easy. I, I tell people, you know, I do have friends, and I'll see that they're they're starving because they're on some kind of real diet diet, and I tell them it's like try low carbine, you know, try that. Um, my daughter, well, let me, I'm going to go backwards just a little bit. After I, I finished HCG and I decided to do the low carbine, I did still lose extra weight after that, you know, um, and I figured once my body, and I'm still, I'm by, I'm by no means thin and I don't expect, you know, my, my bones alone are probably a, you know, a size four, my bones alone probably, weigh. I am a big bone country girl I'm not even gonna you know, try to ignore and I'm okay with that I am I am in no way shape or form ever planned to be really thin but feeling good about myself is a whole different thing and being healthy so um I am at that point right now you know even being an 810 and sometimes I can get into a 78 it just it just depends but um feeling good is is what I what I look at with that um and I just completely forgot where this question started <laughs> like losing weight with your do your daughter and low oh, yes, yes, actually okay. yes that's um, thank you um she had had uh, she had my last grandbaby in april and she had gained a lot of weight and i asked her you know i told her I was like try this try low carbine just do it she has lost 40 pounds and um just doing it and you know low carbine is very similar to h without having the hcg but the the diet and and the types of things you eat are so similar that, that's why I say it was so simple to go from the HCG straight into, you know, the low, the low carbon. And, and for me, it wasn't even just about the low carbon. It, it keeps me away from those foods that may trigger me to go, you know, I, I don't allow myself the, and I know, and I know, I believe you do well with the potatoes and, and stuff like that. And I know people do. Um, but for me, I, I think allowing myself to do that may be enough to go, you know, with the, okay, I had a little bit, you let me just have a little bit more. Yes. And so for me, it's easier just to say no and find another, you know, something else to take its place, and, and, and which is what I do. Um, low carb, I mean, it's, you know, people think, oh, you go out to eat, what are you going to do? It's so simple. You know, I go out, if I, okay, we go to a burger place, I don't want the bun, <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, eat the vegetables. And if I can get, um, you know, a different vegetable on the side instead of fries, I do that. So it's, it's, you find ways around it and it makes it so simple to stay, to stay eating that way. Right. And, um, it's been, it has been, it's been really easy. Now, like I said, I think that, that the HCG going straight from, from that into this, um, it just made it easier just to continue eating healthy like that. So good. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that too, like as far as, you know, kind of knowing what your own personal boundaries are and sticking with them and that, um, and sometimes what you may need at, during a certain time may be different than what you need later or earlier, you know? Um, and I think that's so true. Like for instance, it's like with my boundaries, I have found with me, my age and with CrossFit that I can eat some carbs, you know, but I have boundaries with that though. And there are my own little boundaries in my head. I never get a burger with a bun, even though there are gluten-free buns there. I always get a bunless burger. So my boundary is I do get fries, but I never get a bun on my burger ever. So it's like that's my little boundary. And it's like I don't eat refined sugar still. I don't eat baked goods. Like there's a little place I go to. They have gluten-free, like baked muffins and stuff, cookies. I never – that's just something I don't eat because, like you said, for me – that's something that has the potential to make me make other bad choices. However, 
I get a gluten-free sandwich there all the time, and it has gluten-free bread, and, and that does not derail me. That's my little boundary, and, and that works. So it's like finding those little things and then whatever, of course, you can maintain with, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and sticking with that, you know. Um, so I think that's good. Do you have any favorite resources as far as recipes go for these different low-carb recipes? I actually do. Um, on Facebook, there is a, um, a page called Low Carbing Among Friends, okay. and there are several cooks that actually have their recipes on there, and I, I've purchased the books just so I have them here, but um, that is one of the big, big things for me um, that I keep, and, and it's so funny because you, I just posted, I just shared one today, that, or yesterday, it was lasagna with um, garlic bread. Of course, the bread, the bread's made from cauliflower. That's another thing you find yeah, it's the amazing things you can do with cauliflower. <laughs> you, never would have, you never would have guessed. But, um, you know, the lasagna, and, and I did a lot of the, actually, I shouldn't say a lot, all of the recipes that I have tried, they make you feel like you're eating bad, <laughs> you know? And, and, and um, they're, they're so good, and it makes it so easy. And that's why I was saying, I tell my friends who, who are feeling deprived, and I see them, and they're just eating a salad because they feel you know, like that's all they can do on their diet. And tell me, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, you, you, it does not have to be that way. And you don't have to feel deprived. And it, and it's so easy. I mean, it really, really is easy. It takes time. I'm not going to say, you know, low carbine. I mean, you've got your special ingredients that you have to have and, and, you know, all of that. But once you have them, you can pretty much make anything. And, you know, there's those staple ingredients that you find in everything, the coconut flour and the almond meal and, you know, the coconut oil and all of that. And um, and I've even gotten my husband who eats normal that to eat stuff that he doesn't realize is actually you know healthy. So it um, it's good. It's really good. It's really easy. But that is one of the big places that I um, the 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 uh, sites that I you know always go to in uh, because there are so many different cooks on there that that share their recipes and it's a it it really helps. <laughs> it helps. Is that a Facebook group or Facebook page? It's a page. It's oh. just called Low Carbing Low Carbing Among. Friends, and then there's another one. Um, I think it's called Low Carb Hit Parade. That's another one. And, and that, what that the Low Carb Hit Parade is, they kind of take all the most popular recipes from the uh, Low Carbing Among Friends and post them there. But um, it's really good. <laughs> it's really really good. That's awesome. Maybe what we'll do for those listening and watching, we'll get we'll get the links for I'll get the links for them for those two pages. And then maybe would you mind sending me like titles of your favorite cookbooks, maybe? And then I'll get a link for those for you guys as well, because I think that's the big thing for people is, you know, they know they need to replace, but kind of knowing what are people's favorites can be helpful. And then also, you guys, I have a couple Pinterest boards that you guys might find helpful. Um, it's a P3 recipes board, which a lot of similar recipes. And I have a grain-free, sugar-free board that's all basically like dessert-based that's grain free and sugar free. So I'll I'll link to all of those in the show notes as well. Although you know you did have a story about your dad. Do you do you mind sharing that? Like it's okay if you can <laughs> just because it was really touching. It was really touching to me. I started crying when I was reading it. <laughs> so why don't you share that? Um oh I'm gonna start crying already. Okay. Yeah, growing up my daddy has always been my you know, um I look up to him. And um what daddy thought was always the biggest thing, you know, how, how he looked at me. Um, and I guess when I got to this, to my highest weight, to the 250 or, you know, getting up to there, um, my dad doesn't live here where I live. He's about four and a half hours from me. So I only get to see him a few times a year, um, to make the drive out there. And, um, Every time I'd see my dad, you know, because I'd go months in between, I'd see him, and he would say, oh, you know, you're, you're, look at you, you look beautiful, you know, you look so good. And, and, and I don't think it was something he did intentionally. I mean, of course, I don't believe. But I had realized um, it had been a while since I had heard him say that. You know, of course, it was always telling me he loved me. But to hear him say, oh, look at you, you know, you look beautiful and, and that. And I think it was something he just always did without even thinking about it. So when it stopped, I don't, I don't think he realized that it had stopped. Yeah. And um, when I started my diet in, in September, my goal was to, when I would go see my dad for Christmas, I wanted to get off that truck and, and um, have lost enough weight for him to notice, you know, and... 
that was my sorry that was my reason for doing the the extension it was that i had in my head is i needed to lose enough weight for it to be a complete change from the last time he had seen me and um and that was my and, and actually when i told the doctor i told them that this is the reason you know this is this is why it's so important to me and um i think that was the biggest reason she agreed um so when I, when I, and it just so happened that that weekend that I was going to see my dad was my last, I was going to start into P3. So it was kind of a, um, and it was my first P3. So it was, I'm, I'm going for the holidays, you know, and then I'm having to start P3. And it was kind of a, I was so happy and I was so scared at the same time. Yeah. But when, when I, when I got off the truck and, and my dad saw me, those were the first words out of his mouth was how beautiful I looked and it was you know I had I had reached my goal and so of course you know after that it was just a matter of just going and just keep going and, and um, it made it much easier but that was my um that was not not just to feel better um not to be healthier you know physically healthy but mentally I felt like I I needed that again and um and I, I missed hearing those words. And now every time he sees me, actually, the last time he saw me, I was still in the middle. I was getting ready to start uh, round two. And I just recently saw him again. And he didn't recognize me. Um, we we had gone out to, uh, to an auction that he goes to. And my husband and I walked up. And he recognized mm -hmm. my husband before he recognized me that day. And he just kept going on and on. And, and actually, the people, some people who were there with him, he started telling them, he's like, you wouldn't believe, you know, where she was and, and how far she's come. And he just kept saying how proud he was of me. And, and um, it's a big deal, a huge deal. So well, thank you for sharing that personal story. I just, I, I liked it because we all have things that matter to us. And for each one of us, it's, it's unique to us. You know, it's like we have these unique relationships with our family and just different things that mean things to us and I just I appreciated you sharing that so even though it was emotional <laughs> <laughs> thank you well how about to end on a more lighthearted note um you know in everyday life now so you have your low carb way of eating um but are there times when you do indulge or do you not like when you go to functions or social things now how do you handle that I willpower I don't, I don't indulge. I have never allowed myself, um, say at a birthday party to eat cake, um, anything like that. I just, again, it, it is a, and I don't know if that ever goes away, that, that mental fear of I'm going to wake up tomorrow if I put this piece of cake in my mouth and I'm going to weigh 250 pounds again, you know, and it's like I said, physically, of course, we all know that's impossible, but when you've, when you've been there and you you have that fear of going back, it's, um, and I look at it, the way I look at that is, okay, people may think I'm crazy because I think like that, but it keeps me honest and it keeps me, you know, honest to the way I eat now and, um, and it keeps me healthy. And, and again, for me and the guilt on it, I, that is still one thing I, I deal with a lot is, um, that if I did put that in my mouth, the guilt that I would deal with, and I, and I didn't say this, and this is something that is so funny. I didn't cheat on, you know, during HCG. I, I couldn't, but there were times that I, you know, my grand, I had my grandbabies here with me and they would have French fries or a hamburger. And I just like, it was a McDonald's French fry, you know, and I would, I've just got to taste one. I have to taste one. And knowing that it probably wouldn't impact me in my diet in any way, I would put it in my mouth and literally immediately afterwards, the guilt, it, knowing that if I swallowed that, I wasn't going to live with it, I would spit it out. No joke. I was, and it sounds extreme, yeah. but it, that is what got me. Through. I would taste that fry. I'm like, okay, that's, I'm good. I don't have to swallow this. Yeah. I would just spit it out. And it was just that fear. And I still, I still... I still live with that. I do. And I don't, I don't know if that'll ever go away. You know, um, the fear of going back to that. And, and, um, and that's what honestly keeps me eating the way I eat and staying healthy. Um, I just have, I, and I think that's one thing I am proud of. I do have a lot of willpower. I, I really 
do, and I'm, I'm proud of that. And, and that is what got me through um, all, all of that, you know, through, through completing the protocol and sticking to it and sticking to what I do now. Um, it's just that, that mental, that willpower to, to stay healthy and, and to not go back to feeling, you know, not being able to tie my shoes comfortably or, or any of the things that I, that I couldn't do before. I, I don't ever want to be there again. So um, that's, that's what keeps me doing what I do, honestly. So question for you now. So when you, when you go to like a party or a function and you, and you don't eat cake, like in, in actual real terms, like how do you handle that as far as like, do you, do, do you just stay and visit or do you drink water and visit or do you eat what is low carb there or do people ask you like, why aren't you eating cake or like, so how does that actually play out? I, um, a lot of my family and friends know my lifestyle now and, and how I eat. So it, it's not a very big question. I will, they still offer it. You know, I do still have people who offer it. I just say, no, thank you. Um, if I am at a, at a function, a barbecue, a birthday party or whatever, if there is low carb, um, options there, such as meat or, you know, something like that, a sausage, any, any of that stuff that I'm, I, I can eat, I will. But I do not have any issue whatsoever um, mentally or otherwise um, saying no to cakes and, and stuff like that. I really, I really don't. When I, when I first started um, or, or when I was probably halfway through and my, my birthday, well, it was in November, and my birthday came around in, in November. You know, I started in September. My birthday's in November. My mom had a little birthday party um, for me, and she's like, well, I'm going to make this and this and that. I'm like, okay, mom, but... I can't eat it, you know, and, and she was actually upset with me. And I said, I'm sorry, you know, I can't eat the cake. I can't eat um, whatever you're making. I said, but I will bring my own food and it's perfectly fine. And that's what I did when I was in the middle of HCG. If I had to go somewhere like that in the middle of HCG, um, I would just take my food with me. And I had no, I had no issues with that. I mean, I was on a mission and <laughs> that was it. That was all that, that mattered. And um, what everybody else was doing around me, the cake, the ice cream, didn't phase me. It honestly, it honestly didn't phase me. In the beginning, like I said, when I had those cravings that my mouth missed it, it wasn't that I was hungry, that my mouth was missing it. That was, then my mind would, would, you know, play with me and just wanting it. But once you start losing that weight and you see how, how awesome the protocol is and how well you're doing, it becomes, for me, it just became so easy to say no and to not even think twice about it. So Good. you get to that point. You know, during, during the holidays, I did, um, I baked cookies, I baked breads, I, baked, I did everything. My, I, you know, I was always making desserts for my husband or my family. I didn't even, I didn't think twice about it. It didn't, it didn't bother me at all. But it, it does, it, it's, it's a mental, you have to find that strength. I mean, and believe in what you're doing and, and, and believe in yourself that, that you can do this and just stay strong. That's good. Those are good thoughts. Yeah, and I um, I was thinking a couple things from what you said. The more you say no to something, the easier it gets, you know, right? So I think that's part of it, too. Basically, no becomes a habit. So certain foods that you don't eat that you used to at first, it's harder to say no. But after you do it for a while, it kind of just becomes second nature. It's not a tempting thing anymore because it's, just, it's such a habit of, I just don't eat this, I just don't eat this, I just don't eat this, you know? And, that, and that's why I say when um, when I tell people I'm on a low carb diet, I don't like to use the word diet because that is not. It is a way of life, and it's the way I eat. Okay, I, I don't eat cakes, I don't eat cookies. That's just the way I live now. And and you don't. You just you know as simple it is as it is for some people to pick up a cookie or a piece of cake and eat it. It's that easy for me to pick up a vegetable or you know a fruit instead. And and it's just you don't think about it anymore. And it becomes, it becomes so much easier. It really does. I agree with that, you know, because I, I actually do tend to be fairly strict myself, even to this day, with certain things like you mentioned. Um, and for me, it, it's not only about certain types of foods, but it's also actually certain situations. So, like, social settings, I have found that um, I just get out of control more easily. I don't know if it's because I'm, like, distracted by all the people, but... Um, I lose my, um, I don't know what the right word is, but I kind of lose my sense of control a little bit. You know, almost like if you drink too much or something, you know, your inhibitions. 
I lose oh, yes. feel and it's, and I don't drink, so it's nothing to do with that. But I actually do lose some of my inhibitions when I'm in a social setting. So for me, there's certain settings that I don't that I actually won't eat at all at, mm-hmm. or I won't eat certain foods that I will eat usually like at home by myself or which is with my family. Um, there's just certain settings I've found that yeah, just for some reason, even to this day, it's been almost three years. Because I'll still do it once in a while, and I'm like, man, why did I just eat half a bag of chips? Like, <laughs> you know, like that, and I don't feel too good now. And I'm like, because I was talking with a bunch of people, and I, I just got carried away. And like, so, so that has really helped me, and that's why kind of really looking at multiple things and being creative about how you craft your lifestyle, I think, can be helpful for people to find what works for them long term, you know? Definitely. I, I agree with that completely. Yeah. And there are times, just like you said, where you'll go somewhere and just not eat because you don't want to have to deal with, with that. I, I do the same thing. I do. Yeah. And it's easy. I mean, you, you know, again, you, you, you walk away, I guess you walk away from HCG just feeling so much mentally stronger. I don't know. I, I did. I know I did. And, um, it, it made it easy for me to, to be that way now and just say, okay, everybody else is eating. No big deal. I'm I'm good. <laughs> you know, when I get home, I have my the food I can eat, and that's it. It's it's not a big not a big deal. Yeah, I think it's partly too like wouldn't you agree? Like the realization that food is not the main point of life. I mean, I think that's what HCG and like losing that weight teaches you is like like oh like life shouldn't revolve around food and food. Yeah, it's good, but it's actually not that important. I actually have a lot of other things in my life that are more important. So because of that, it's not like, oh, I, you know, it's not the main focus of everything anymore. So it frees yeah. you up to make those types of choices, you know. Definitely. Yeah. I agree. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for that, Melissa. I feel like we talked about a lot of good stuff today. Thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful to talk to you. <laughs> you look fantastic, and you look really healthy and great. Like you said, it's, it's about being healthy and um, not, like you said, like, not everybody is trying to get to a super thin look. Like, even though I'm small, I'm a little shorter than you, and I have stocky legs. Like, I do. If you see, if, if, I, if I take pictures of my legs, I don't look at them and say, wow, you know, my legs look really nice and thin. Like, I mean, they're kind of stocky and muscular, but, you know, I'm proud of that. And, and, and I know they're strong, and I know they're healthy, and that's exactly what counts, you know. And that's me. My, my thing is my, my legs, my legs have always been thick, and I've always been proud of that. I have no, you know, I have no problem with that. And I and I don't have any problem being a, a thicker woman. Um, it was it was truly all about feeling better mentally and, and, and health, health-wise, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm good with a little, the curves, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the only thing I wish, and, and, I, and I guess a lot of people don't, you know, the only thing I wish wouldn't have disappeared were up top and down low there. But I would have been okay with the booty staying around a little more. <laughs> talked about in the show notes so um this is episode 33 again so anyway thanks so much for being with me today thank you Rizal thank you so much it was wonderful